To determine the order from a concentration versus time graph, we need to examine what's happening to the half-life. The half-life is the time it takes for the concentration to become half its previous value. We see that the first half-life is 1.3 seconds. We need to work out at least three successive half-lives to see what the pattern is. If the successive half-lives increase, the reaction is second order with respect to the reactant being monitored. If the successive half-lives decrease, the reaction is zero order. Successive half-lives that are constant, like we have here, indicate a first order reaction. Once we know the orders for each of the reactants, we can write the rate equation. Rate equals constant times concentration of oxygen, because it's first order, times concentration of nitrogen monoxide squared, because it's second order. We can use the graph to work out the rate of the reaction at any time. The gradient of the graph at that time is equal to the rate. We find the gradient by drawing a tangent and then working out the gradient of the tangent as the change in y over the change in x. Note that the concentration axis may have a scaling factor included with the units as it does here, so that has to be included in any y values. Here we find the gradient is 8.4 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per dm cubed per second. If we rearrange the rate equation, we can see that the rate constant is equal to the rate divided by the concentration terms. We can use that rate at 3 seconds that we just worked out, along with the concentration at 3 seconds, which we need to read from the graph, to find the rate constant. The units of the rate constant are found by dividing the units of rate, moles per dm cubed per second, by the units of concentration times concentration squared. We could cancel moles and per dm cubed on the top and bottom, leaving us with units of moles to the minus 2, dm to the 6, seconds to the minus 1.